What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got another live fantasy football mock draft for you back in Fantasy Pros with a 10-team full PPR mock selecting from the eighth overall position. So it should be pretty interesting. Our roster, one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, a flex, and then five bench spots. That's pretty much it. All you need to know. So let's kick this thing off. And while we wait, a quick reminder, if you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear it in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, let's get right into it. And let's quickly see what has taken place so far. And man, oh man, the computers just went crazy here because for the first time ever, Yes, it's full PPR. I have seen Justin Jefferson being selected with the 101 pick. Uh, okay, I, I didn't expect that to happen. And I understand that people love Justin Jefferson. And, you know, the wide receiver position is kind of making a comeback. But I continue to say running back is king. And I would have taken Christian McCaffrey 10 times out of 10 or uh, Austin Eckler ahead of uh, Justin Jefferson. But that means some talent dropped to us. Travis Kelsey also went at the 104. Ramondre Stevenson, B. John Robinson, and Jonathan Taylor. So as you can see, what that means for us, Saquon Barkley, uh, who Fantasy Pros has ranked third overall, now I'd have him ranked a little bit lower for what it's worth, is there for us with the eighth overall pick. Insane value. And here, I'm going to guarantee that I get a running back. So I'm taking Saquon Barkley, and then let's see what happens in this next round. So in the second round, we can potentially go Tony Pollard. Uh, the last four picks were Jamar Chase, Josh Jacobs, Brees Hall, and Cooper Cup. I was really hoping Cooper Cup would fall to us. Doesn't quite happen. Tony Pollard's there, which I think would be a really, right, really nice combo with him and Saquon Barkley. We could go wide receiver or we could, you know, wait uh, for the third and fourth round wide receivers. Uh, this isn't as big of a league and we don't have to wait that long between our back-to-back -back selections. So, you know, let's see how this pans out. I always advocate, uh, for a long time I have, that running back position is so, so very key. So I think Tony Pollard here makes a lot of sense. You know, Nick Chubb is also tempting, but I think Pollard has uh, some higher pass catching upside. So I'm going to go Tony Pollard. I think argu arguably we have some of the best pass catchers uh, or excuse me, some of the best running backs uh, out of these uh, other fellow teams, especially where we drafted. You know, sure, somebody has a Bijan and a Nick Chubb, but uh, they drafted two picks before us. Uh, but I will say that's also does contend for uh, some of the best value here. Uh, but again, they took advantage of the fact that Justin Jefferson and Travis Kelsey went uh, both within the top four picks. Uh, speaking of some of these other names, let's see what happened after 20. Pollard pick, you see Tyreek, then Nick Chubb, great value in both of them. Joe Mixon, kind of a little bit too early for my liking, uh, even though you could argue he should be drafted sooner than uh, what we were seeing like a month ago. Then a huge run on the wide receivers, at least the top four remaining names, uh, who were great values, Diggs, CeeDee, Devontae Adams, and A.J. Brown. Then Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook, Jameer Gibbs, way too early for Dalvin Cook and Jameer Gibbs for, you know... For peep's sake, we've got Dalvin Cook, who's a free agent, and uh, we don't know where he's going to go, but he's being drafted at the start of the third round, uh, where you can still get a Najee Harris, where you can still get, you know, a Kenneth Walker. Uh, so no thank you. Jameer Gibbs, I don't know how you can draft him that high, considering David Montgomery is there. Uh, then Mark Andrews, Aaron Jones, Jalen Waddle, Travis Etienne. So here, this is a no-brainer for me. I wanted wide receiver uh, and... I'm going to get it because I'm going Amon Ross St. Brown. Now, the ideal scenario, I'm just going to say it because I know there's it's not going to happen, would be Garrett Wilson falling to me this next round. Um, but let's see. No, yeah, of course it doesn't happen. Uh, we were kind of close, though. Uh, he went with the first pick in the fourth round after Amon Ra. You see Kenneth Walker, Najee Harris, Garrett Wilson, and T. Higgins. I'm not super mad, though. Uh, right now, we could go with Chris Olavi, who I think is very very good value at this point in time. Uh, you know, PPR wise, I think that it's like him and Keenan Allen is the two best values. Devonta Smith, uh, a little bit more boomer bust. So I'm going to go Chris Olave here. And I mean, just look at our roster. We got Saquon, Tony Pollard, Amon Ross St. Brown. Now we're going to add Chris Olave. Uh, I think we're in a really, really good spot at this point in time, folks. 
Uh, so let's see what happens in this fifth round. Let's see the values. Let's see some of these other names that have been selected. So TJ Hawkinson goes after our pick, then Devonta Smith, Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift, Chris Godwin, Tyler, Lock- Tyler Lockett goes ahead of some big names in Metcalf, Cooper, DJ Moore, Debo, Calvin Ridley. I would not have done that. Patrick Mahomes, uh, then a run of those wide receivers I mentioned, Josh Allen and J.K. Dobbins. Jalen Hurts here is tempting. I am not going to lie. Uh, running backs, I also do like Miles Sanders. Uh, and I will say, you know, I think we've done a really good job getting our two top running backs or two top wide receivers. So we can, you know, uh, I don't even want to say reach, but quote unquote reach on all these premier positions in quarterback or tight end. Uh, I'm more inclined to reach on the quarterback position. I think tight end, we can do some things uh, in the later rounds. We'll see. We'll see if that's the case. So here I'm going to go Jalen Hurts, and then I'm going to go either like Miles Sanders or one of these other really good wide receivers that I like. So I'm going with Jalen Hurts. And now uh, let's see what happens. So we saw Cam Akers, Jerry Judy, Lamar, George Kittle. So George Kittle is off the board. That's fine. Miles Sanders is still there. I think he's a really, really good depth piece at an important position at running back. You know, we could wait and get like an Alexander Madison or maybe wait for James Conner. But uh, I have a little bit more faith in Miles Sanders. You know, he's not as injury prone as a James Conner. Alexander Madison, he's more proven than Alexander Madison. Tight end, do we go tight end? Um, I'd rather wait on tight end, honestly. I'm okay potentially getting like, and David Njoku or an Evan Ingram or a Dalton Schultz. So here, do we go running back or do we go wide receiver is essentially what it boils down to. I'm going to take a chance and see if Marquise Brown drops to us in this next round. And I'm not going to take a Hopkins who, again, similar to Dalvin Cook, still hasn't signed anywhere or Terry McLaurin or Michael Pittman. I'm going to go Miles Sanders, a guy that I do believe in and have our running back position, which again is so, so important. Uh, pretty much locked down. So let's go Miles Sanders. Uh, and kind of like I predicted, James Conner is still available, you know, but I just wanted to get my guy. I wanted to get a guy that I believe in. Sometimes you have to do that. Ooh, wow. So the guy that we mentioned, Marquise Brown was selected literally immediately after we chose, uh, then Terry McLaurin, Justin Fields, Javante. So we're running quarterbacks, Justin Fields, Joe Burrow in the sixth and the seventh, Justin Herbert, Trevor Lawrence, Deshaun Watson, DeAndre Hopkins, Traylon Burks. I don't know how Traylon, how in the hell is Traylon Burks going ahead of Michael Pittman? That makes zero sense. And the fact that Michael Pittman is still there. Jeez, what are we doing here, folks? So what do we, what do we do here? Because I think Kyle Pitts is going to be one of these next two selections. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the depth afterwards. I, I guess I wouldn't mind a Darren Waller or an Evan Ingram. Uh, at wide receiver, I, I just think that Michael Pittman is by far and away the best wide receiver left right now. So I'm kind of leaning Michael Pittman. And then we will miss out, miss out on Kyle Pitts. But you know what? Uh, let's let's get let's get that top notch tight on tight end. Let's get the lead tight end. And then uh, whatever happens, happens. Uh, and let's see if I was right. If there was a tight end selected. Wow. So there was no tight end selected. I was banking that there would be a tight end here, uh, uh, the last team overall, but that's all right. Okay. Uh, I still think we got Kyle Pitts at a good value for get fantasy pros telling it's a reach. Uh, we got a good value on him. So, uh, we got Kyle, uh, Kyle Pitts there, you know, obviously hindsight 2020, whatever, uh, here wide receiver. I also don't mind Mike Williams. I honestly don't, you know, the number two on a very, very good offense, uh, proven commodity, and on a pass heavy quarterback. So I'm going Mike Williams here as our depth piece at wide receiver. I like how that's going for us. And, you know, we're in a good spot. I I really do think that we are in a good place with this team. Uh, We circumvented some important decisions and the starting squad is looking pretty good. I mean, I'm not going to lie. We got very lucky with Saquon and Tony Pollard and then Amon Ra and Chris Olave. Like, the first four rounds could not have gone better. And then Jalen Hurts in the fifth. We got Miles Sanders as well. I actually think really the only thing you can kind of argue is like Kyle that Kyle Pitts selection. Um, but let's look at our cheat sheet again. And, man, I'm, I, I am happy we got three running backs because I 
really don't like the running backs that are, are left right now. Uh, wide receiver wise, it's interesting here. I like Jordan Addison. I like Jahan Dotson. Uh, let's go with, you know, I'm looking at the team. I'm probably going to go with Jahan Dotson first, and then we'll go with Jordan Addison if he's there. He is. I really like the upside with Jordan Addison playing opposite Justin Jefferson. So, you know, we waited to get a wide receiver, uh, you know, our third wide receiver until we got to our bench plays. But I think that, uh, you know, we're, we've are we gotten some very, very good value at the wide receiver position. So we're going to make two final selections here and kind of wrap this thing up. But I, I like the way we have kind of constructed this roster. I can also now go ahead and select a tight end uh, as a potential backup to Kyle Pitts in case he struggles again, uh, which is definitely a possibility. You know, Cole Kmet is a guy that I liked last year, but with the addition of DJ Moore, uh, I think it's going to take away a lot of opportunities from Cole Kmet. So I'd rather pass on him for somebody like a, you know, Greg Dolchich or even Gerald Everett. Uh, I don't believe in the Tennessee passing attack. So uh, no thank you there. So yeah, I'm going Greg Dolchich here as a backup. Again, we already have Kyle Pitts. So I'm going Greg Dolchich here as a backup, a nice little breakout, his uh, mini breakout in his rookie season last year. So we've got our backup tight end taken care of. Let's see if anything else is kind of sticking out. Uh, I could go a backup quarterback here. I honestly, I think this is going to be our last selection. So which backup quarterback do we go with? I mean, we already have a huge, huge high upside guy, so I don't necessarily have to take a chance on somebody like a Anthony Richardson like I would typically do. I think I can go with just a steady guy, and that would either be Kirk Cousins, you know, nothing too too insane, but just delivers. But you know what? I think Aaron Rodgers is going to rebound this year. I'm going to go with Aaron Rodgers as our backup quarterback, and we're going to wrap this thing up, and let's see the grade that we get. You know, I think the only place we can really get knocked is tight end. But again, we got some decent depth. Anytime you're in a 10-team league, it's it's tough to not end up with a pretty decent roster. And I think the grade here, the B-plus, reflects that. I think the names that we got reflect that. We got a arguably top two quarterback, even potentially number one guy in Jalen Hurts. We got Saquon, Tony Pollard in the first two rounds, again, picking an eighth overall, great value. Amon Ron, Chris Olave falling to us in the third, four, fourth round was a cheat code. I really like Miles Sanders as a flex. And then our wide receivers, we waited a little bit, but we still got Mike Williams, Jahan, Jordan Addison, Dolchich, uh, Aaron Rodgers backing up Jalen Hurts. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to bounce back big time this year. I really like this roster. Let me know your thoughts. Do you agree, disagree? Let me hear it in the comment section along with any other questions you guys might have. I'll do my best to answer them all. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe. In the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.